Hey everyone, Zeph and Moses Blacksburg here, and in today's video, we're going to do a full run through of planning to use an ATEM 2ME constellation for an upcoming conference. I'm going to show you the floor plan, the diagram, the layout. We're going to talk through some of the cable runs and what's going to be needed. We're also going to be including a virtual Zoom guest, so I'll speak a little bit about Mix Minus and how that works. And then later on, I'll actually review the pricing for this and talk about how we priced out this event. So with that said, let's dive into the diagram and talk all about what this event is. So this particular event is in a location in Washington, D.C. Uh, I can't speak as to the particular topic, but essentially it's a conference with people speaking on stage. Uh, there will be various panel discussions, fireside chats, and some Zoom virtual presenters. So as you can see here, we have our diagram of the room. This has been generously provided by the event planner. Uh, we're working in partnership with an events company, and they will provide the lighting, the staging. They're going to provide the chairs, uh, the tech tables, the tech drape to cover up our tech table. So they are kind of the middleman here, and we are providing the cameras, the live streaming equipment, you name it. So. We're going to be working with a room that fits, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 150 people, give or take. You can see down here in the bottom right, I'm actually going to use a star so that I can uh, kind of call some attention to some of these items, make it a little bit easier for you all to see what's happening here. Um, let's go with let's go with this lightning bolt. Let's make a fun little lightning bolt. I feel like uh, that, that painting program that you used to see on TV. Happy little trees. Um, so here's my little lightning bolt so I can kind of point to things here. So first and foremost is we have our stage in this bottom right corner and on stage you can see there's a monitor here, there's a monitor here, and then there's actually a confidence monitor right in front of the stage. Now this diagram is a little bit outdated because we are actually going to add in two confidence monitors to the front of the stage. So just assume that there are two monitors side by side right here at the front of the stage. The stage is made to seat up to six people at a time and then chairs may be modified depending on what's going on for that particular session. Now you'll notice that we have an AV ready room back here. This is the room where our A2 audio tech is going to be to lav people up with their microphones. And this is kind of the green room, if you will, uh, for where our speakers are going to be going when they're ready to get started. There's some press tables over here in case press shows up, in which case we will provide a press malt box so that they can tap in to get an audio feed. And we will most likely be providing an SDI cable with a clean feed, meaning we're providing everything that's being seen by the live stream minus the lower thirds graphics and some of the graphics that are going into the event. So that feed may be run to the press table there. It may sit back with us down here at our AV table you can see down here. I haven't finalized that until I'm on site for the setup day. Now back here we have a camera that will go up on a riser and that's going to be our close-up shot getting the close-ups of the speakers. So that will be manned or womaned. We have both uh, both on our team for this event, uh, which I'm really grateful for because uh, this industry can be uh, fairly male dominated. So it's great to have a diverse team. And we need to have one more camera that we haven't quite figured out until the setup day. And that camera is going to be our wide shot of the stage. So it's either going to be somewhere back here, or I've been told there might be a balcony that we can get up onto and just drop a cable down. So I haven't determined where that's going to go yet. Now back here in this back room, there's actually kind of a networking and social room for people to kind of go off to the side and hold some business meetings. We're going to have a TV screen in there that is also displaying everything that's displaying on the screens at the front of the room. So in the end, we've got uh, our two screens on stage. So one, two, our two confidence monitors, three, four, there isn't a second one in there yet. And then five, we have this screen back here. So that's five total feeds that we're going to be supplying out, plus one more for our press feeds so that if they need to take a feed of the live stream event for the day, they can get that. So that is six total outputs. Inputs wise, we're looking at our two cameras. We obviously have our first one here. The second one may go centered in the back. We haven't quite figured out 
whoops, we haven't quite figured out the location for that just yet. So we don't have confirmation on what's going to happen there at the moment. So let's jump in and talk about what we're using for this event for this live stream because I think a lot of people will be curious as to what I might be using to switch these days. As you know, I've used the ATEM Minis, ATEM Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO Extreme. Now we're on to the ATEM SDIs and I have the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO model. But as of recently, I've also chosen to upgrade to get the ATEM Constellation 2ME switcher. Originally, I was trying to avoid doing this because I wasn't a fan of the fact that it has to be rack mounted and then you don't have a control panel or a control surface to control it. So then you have to either use the Blackmagic ATEM control software or you have to get some stream decks or you buy like a 1ME advanced panel, which is actually what I did wind up doing is I dropped the $3,000 to buy an ATEM 1ME advanced panel, which is actually really great because having a 2ME switcher, I can hit the 2ME button and I can switch both MEs uh, on this one panel. So it's really nice to essentially be able to switch two completely independent shows. That way I can send certain shows to the projector screens in-house and a different show to the live stream viewers at home. So there are some big advantages to taking that leap that I'm certainly starting to figure out as we're getting into bigger and bigger events and more and more complications with um, not really complications complications but complexity uh, with the setups for these events because as you could see in that slide there um, that's going to require quite a lot of cable runs and feeds which we'll talk about in a second here so let me hop into this slide here so you can see so i have our atem 2me at the top uh, just a visual for you to see what's happening there and um, let me actually go ahead and pull myself away here so I'm not covering this up. Uh, so inputs, now inputs are going to be a little bit different than what I have listed here. And the reason is because the ATEM Constellation 2ME has two dedicated multi-view outputs. So what I chose to do was I wanted those multi-view outputs to be routable. Um, meaning right now, those two outputs, those two SDI connections, only feed multi-view out. And none of the 12 outputs that are built into the 2ME can output the multi-view. So you can only use these two built-in ones unless you take the two multi-view outputs and you loop them into the inputs. So what I have done with my 2ME is I've taken the two SDI outputs that are dedicated to multi-view, and I've gone ahead and taken a little SDI cable that sits in the back of my rack panel, and it goes from the multi-view output one to input 19, since it's very rare that I ever use all 20 inputs. And then multi-view output two goes to input 20. And that way, I'm taking that multi-view and I'm sending it back into my ATEM 2ME. That way, I can now feed that multi-view out to any of the 12 outputs. It's one of those weird things where you would think that you would be able to send multi-view to any of the 12 outputs regardless, but unfortunately, you cannot do that with the 2ME constellation without sending it to inputs first. So we are burning two of our 20 inputs, which is really not a big deal, but we are burning two of the 20 inputs so that we can feed it into uh, the Constellation 2ME, and then I'm typically burning two of my 12 outputs because I feed them to the two monitors that are built into my rack unit, and then I can feed them anywhere else. So typically from the get-go, I'm already starting not at a disadvantage, but at fewer inputs and outputs than you would think. So instead of 20 inputs, I have 18 inputs, and instead of 12 outputs, I have 10 outputs. So just keep that in mind as we talk about these slides. So right here, as you can see, we have input one will be camera one, that's our static wide shot. Input two will be camera two, and that's our manned close-up shot. Input three is going to be video playback. So we have a MacBook Pro that's dedicated to being just video playback that's using the MIDI app for Mac. And uh, that's a cool little app that I learned about recently that I've been very interested in using for playback. So I don't have to worry about converting my footage to be the right format and everything to play on a HyperDeck. Then we have input four, which is going to be PowerPoint slides. Input five, which is our virtual guest on Zoom. 
input six, which is our countdown timer. Now let's talk about backups. And actually I just realized I missed one of my outputs here. Um, so let's dive into this and then I'll talk about what I missed. So output number one is going to be stage monitor on the left. Output number two, stage monitor on the right. Output three is gonna be confidence monitor. Output four is gonna be our countdown timer. So it's a second confidence monitor that only shows the countdown timer. Output five is going to go to the back of the room monitor. Output six is going to be our press clean feed. So that's going to the press. Then output seven and eight are both going to HyperDex and those are our recordings. One of course being a backup. Now, what did I miss here? Well, if you notice, we have a Zoom virtual guest, and so we have to be able to feed them a live feed of the show, and we'll talk about Mix Minus in just a second here. But with that virtual guest calling in on Zoom, they need to be able to see the show so that they can see and hear everything that's happening in the live stream and know when it's their turn to go up and speak. And when it is their turn to speak, I'll obviously take them live to the screens in the room and they will see themselves in that return video feed. So let's talk a little bit about what that return video feed looks like and what you would do to send them a mix minus feed. Sound good? All right, so here let's talk about our virtual guest called in on Zoom. Now, if there were more than one person in the room, then I would typically bring in Zoom ISO, which is a great tool for putting multiple people up on multiple outputs from a computer. Uh, but since these will only be one speaker at a time, we're just going to full screen our speaker in Zoom. And if we want to, we can drag the chat room controls and the participants window off of that display and move it to a second display. So we're just showing the uh, full screen image of the person on Zoom. We will also change the settings in Zoom so that we hide the presenter's name badge that typically comes up at the bottom of the screen. And so we're just going to get a full feed of our person speaking on Zoom. Now we've got a couple inputs and outputs here to talk about with the Zoom computer. The Zoom computer is going to get a USB-B to USB-C return feed from our Blackmagic web presenter. This is the OG original model web presenter. So this original model allowed you to take either an HDMI feed in or an SDI feed in, as well as an XLR audio feed in. So this allows us to send them the video feed of the live stream event, but override the audio feed so that we can send them mix minus audio. I'll talk about that in a second. Then our outputs from the computer are taking the headphone audio output into our audio mixer so that we can get a feed of that person talking and an HDMI out, which will go into an SDI converter and that will make its way into our ATEM switcher. And that's how we get the full video feed of that person speaking. So let me talk about mix minus for a second here. If you were our Zoom virtual guest and you called into our live stream, you would see the show, right, in Zoom. You would see what's happening live. You would see the same show that I'm switching and I'm streaming out of my stream computer. That's because we're taking an output from the ATEM and we're feeding it back to you. So we're giving you a feed of the full event. But when I'm taking your feed to input into my switcher, I'm taking your visual and I'm taking your audio, right? Well, if I took your audio, into my ATEM switcher. It's gonna wind up in the live stream so people can hear you speaking. The problem is you are going to be seeing and hearing a return feed. If that return feed has your voice in it, you're gonna hear yourself at about a half second delay and it's going to drive you nuts. It's going to make it practically impossible for you to give a 45 minute long presentation or however long your speech is. That's why Mix Minus is so important. We need to be able to send you an audio feed so that you hear people speaking in the room. So let's say there's somebody up on stage that's saying, okay, now next up is this speaker virtually on Zoom. You need to be able to hear them introducing you so that you know when you're being cued to walk up on stage virtually using Zoom, right? And so if we also sent your voice back to you, you're gonna hear that person speak. And then as soon as you say, oh, thanks everyone, thank you so much for you know having me here today, you're gonna hear that fed back into your ears and you're gonna be trying to think and trying to talk and it's just not going to work. This is why we take an audio feed out of the Zoom computer and into our audio mixer. 
our mixing tech, tech can basically take that feed and say, okay, I'm gonna play that in the room so the live audience in the room can hear it. I'm gonna play it out to the live stream so everyone on the live stream can hear it, but I am not going to play it over the feed that is going back to that person. So that's where our audio tech will give me an XLR cable and he will be able to route everything but your own voice back to you using his audio mixer. That audio cable is then going to go into our web presenter, which you can see in the bottom left corner here. It has an XLR audio input and in the web presenter settings, I can say, don't use the SDI audio or don't use the HDMI audio. I can say only use the XLR audio. So it will then override any audio that was feeding into the web presenter and only use the audio that I'm feeding it. This web presenter is what's controlling that return feed to you so that you see the live stream, that's the SDI input, and you hear everything but yourself, that's the XLR input. The way that you see it is this USB webcam output that comes out of the web presenter and into the computer. It's very similar to how an ATEM Mini works. When you take a USB cable from the ATEM and into your computer, your computer sees it as if a webcam is plugged in, and that's what the original web presenter does. It tricks the computer into thinking whatever video and audio feed it's being sent is the feed that is a webcam plugged into the computer, essentially. That's a little briefer on how Mix Minus works. There's more technical things to it because every audio switcher or mixer is going to be different, and so our audio technician, who is a master at his craft, that's why we prefer to bring him in to make sure that he routes the audio to go to all the right places and so that you don't end up hearing yourself. These are, of course, all things that we will test during our setup day, which happens the day before the event. So all the cables will be run, everything will be taken care of. Make sense? So one thing that I also wanna talk about is our tech table and what that looks like. So here's kind of a quick image of what our tech table looks like. This is not including the uh, audio mixer or anything else happening there. And this is a very simplified version. So for starters, we have a lot of computers. One of them is going to be our Zoom computer. That's how we're bringing in our virtual guest. One of them is going to be our video playback computer. One of them is going to be for PowerPoint slides. One is going to be for a countdown timer that's going to be fed to one of the confidence monitors up front of the room. Then, of course, we have our ATEM2ME Constellation switcher. We're using the ATEM1ME Advanced Panel to control it, and we have our multi-view monitor right there next to it. So of course, naturally, we're going to have a streaming computer right there, and that's what's going to control the Blackmagic software control, that's what's going to load in the lower thirds graphics, and that's how I'll be monitoring the stream as we go along. So that's a very basic example of what the tech table is going to look like. Now, last but not least, I wanted to talk about pricing and what this event looks like cost-wise and what we were able to bill to the client. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So in our pricing, and this is just a very bare bones basic example of what our invoice would add up to, and to be quite honest, we probably could have charged more for this. Uh, we're charging $1,000 for pre-production, that's estimating 10 hours at $100, and that's what we're doing as we're you know, taking our calls with the clients, some emails back and forth, just some of this planning and prep work. The live stream director is being billed at 150 an hour, and that live stream director has five hours of setup time on the setup day and another 10 hours of time on the live stream event day. This may wind up going up or down depending on what's needed on each day. Same goes for a camera operator at 125 an hour for five hours on the setup day and 10 hours on the live stream day. Production assistants are $100 an hour a piece. We're using two. Uh, that way we can have one to control the Zoom and get the virtual guests in, and one that can help out with the countdown timer and the video playbacks. So $100 an hour at 15 hours a piece for both of those. We're billing $875 for bringing our video equipment. That's our two cameras, that's our live stream switchers, some extra computers, and things like that. 
Then we have an audio A1 tech. That's our lead technician for audio. He's bringing in his PA speakers for the room. He's also bringing in his mixer and all of his cabling. And that's charged at $2,250 with an audio A2 tech, which is our guy that's going to be in back, lav miking up all of the speakers before they go on stage. That's billed at $1,350. Audio equipment, so this is all the equipment that's coming with our audio tech. He's bringing all the wireless lavs and everything that he needs, and that's $1,650. Post-production, the client has asked for us to do a quick edit of a recap video for the event to send to them within 48 to 72 hours after the event. We're billing $100 per hour at 15 hours worth of work. Hard drives, the client did request to have the raw footage of the recordings of the day, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we provide that to them. And then equipment rental. And this is where I wanted to talk about the additional equipment that we determined was needed for this event. So as we got to talking and they added in the countdown timer and they added in another confidence monitor, we basically explained that we need to, to be charging a little bit more because we're bringing additional computers and we're renting equipment from a local vendor. The equipment that I'm bringing is mostly additional laptops, some additional cables and converters, but I chose that since our room is a pretty long run and we have to run a bunch of feeds to the front of the room, I'll show you here. Since we have to run four feeds to the front of the room, the two confidence monitors and the two monitors that are up on stage, it made more sense to rent a fiber cable from a partner of ours. And that fiber cable run is going to have us sending four feeds up to the front, just over one cable. So at our tech table, we'll be able to send out four SDI feeds into converters that will then convert it into fiber. And it will be one fiber cable run to all of those screens, making life a whole lot easier for us. And then we just have one long SDI cable run to the back of the room for that TV screen in the very back. That way the people that are back there networking can also see the live show. That's also something that if we wanted to, we could consider sending wirelessly because we have line of sight with it and we could send it over a wireless transmitter, but we're probably going to go all hardwired since we have the time and the space to set up for all of this stuff. So that's kind of the gist of what we're doing on this upcoming live stream event. Uh, we're doing it with the ATEM 2ME Constellation. So I thought I would run through with you all everything from the pricing to the diagram and the layout of the room and what we're thinking about as far as inputs and outputs go. And that way you can get a better understanding of using mix minus, bringing in virtual presenters over Zoom, uh, sending out feeds to multiple screens. You'll probably notice here that you probably would have run out of outputs if you use the ATEM SDI Extreme because even though it has four outputs, one of them would have been your multi-view and then you'd only have three outputs. So unless all screens were the same, then you could use splitters, uh, you'd probably run out of the capability to send enough outputs to enough places, especially once you add in that clean feed that needs to go out to the press, the two confidence monitors that need to be two different things, one's the countdown timer and one is the slides, uh, the two screens that are up on stage. So there's a lot going on there that you wouldn't be able to handle. And that's a big reason why I chose to eventually add in the ATEM Constellation 2ME into my setup, because it simply just made sense for some of the projects that I started to bring in later this year. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, this training, this dialogue. I want to have some more questions and comments from you that I can answer down below. So if you have any questions on this setup or if you have any ideas or things that you would have done differently, go ahead and let me know down below in that comment section and we can continue the conversation further from down there. All right, that's it for me. I will see you next time.